one night in 1952 at approximately 5.30 a.m. Ellsworth Raymond Johnson was shot in the chest and stomach due to an altercation he had at Vets Club. Vets Club was located at 122nd Street and St. Nicholas Avenue, owned by John Levy, who was the boyfriend of Billie Holiday. This was one of those after-hour spots where you needed a password to get in. Or you had to be referred from someone. You had to tell the doorman, so-and-so sent you. A tall, dark-skinned man named Hawk was also in the night spot that night. Hawk was a sucker. And for a while now, Hawk done wanted to make a name for himself. Hawk has always wanted the approval from the Harlem gangsters. Hawk, being drunk off his ass, stumbled over to the bar and ordered another round of scotch. Then he proceeded to talk loudly about all the money his trick bitches made for him that night. Bumpy yelled at him and told him to cool out. Don't you see there's ladies in here? Show some respect. Hawk replied, Nigga, who the fuck are you to tell me to cool out? Bumpy looked at him up and down and said, you better carry your behind out of here before you get carried out. An eagle bruised Hawk left and Bumpy brought a round of drinks for the ladies to apologize. An hour later, Hawk returned, filled up with even more liquid courage. Hawk pointed a gun right at Bumpy's head and said, what you got to say now, nigga? At this time, Bumpy was out on bail, so he wasn't carrying any weapons, no guns, no knives. Bumpy back was up against the bar. There was no escape. Bumpy said, you need to go home and sleep it off. Bumpy was reaching behind him to see if he can grab something off the bar that he can use for a weapon. Bumpy told him, man, you need to chill out. You was wrong, you got called out on it, and it's over now. Hawk said, ain't shit over. As Hawk fired the shot, Bumpy cracked him over the head with a potted plant, which disrupted his aim. So instead of Bumpy getting shot in the head, he got shot in the chest. And then Hawk fired two more shots into his stomach. Hawk immediately left Harlem after that, never to be seen again. Bumpy had many wars and many near-death experiences. The OG, Red Dillard. Red Dillard was once called the most dangerous man in the country. This was from federal law enforcement. Red Dillard, pimp, stick up kid, heroin dealer. He even dabbled into the music business. And when you look at Red Dillard, he reminds you of another Red. Maybe he also hanged a few dudes off of the balcony. <laughs> At any time, this dude could be on one. Red was once one of a dozen victims getting robbed inside of a restaurant. Two gunmen came in and held up the entire spot. While one of them was occupied, Red tripped the other one up, and he fell to the floor. The other gunman grabbed Red, and Red sliced his throat with a broken bottle. Red once borrowed money from one of one of Bumpy's friends. See, he wasn't aware that Red didn't pay people back. And Bumpy's friend thought nobody would cross over one of Bumpy's people. 
Little did he know, Bumpy met his match with Red. Because Red was just as much of a gangster as he was. Bumpy and his crew spotted Red at Shep's Bar and Grill on 145th Street. A member of Bumpy's entourage ran up and punched Red in the face, and a brawl began. Red pulled his gun out and started busting. A few days later, Red was spotted again. Bumpy's friend who let Red borrow the money wasn't much for violence. And when he saw Red, he said, if I had my gun, I'll shoot that nigga right now. Bumpy said, no problem, and handed him a 38. Bumpy said, go for it. So his friend is pointing the gun at Red, and he walks over and asks him, where's my money? Red laughed and turned his back on him. Said, I ain't giving you shit. Now shoot, punk motherfucker. Bumpy slammed down this chair and walked over. All of Bumpy's buddies was grabbing him. They said, nah, man, this ain't your fight. If you help him now, he'll never be able to hold his head in the streets. Bumpy said, nah, he's fucking with my man. The crew responded, said, look, it's not like he's harming him. It's not like he's killing him. He's not going to the hospital. Bumpy said, yeah, you're right. But somebody needs to teach his ass a lesson. Red finally crossed the line. He stabbed another one of Bumpy's friends, and when Bumpy heard of the news in the middle of the night, he heard and put his clothes on and he sped over to the hospital. When he arrives at the hospital, the first thing Bumpy sees is this dude laughing and joking in the lobby, flirting with the women. Bumpy ran over and beat the hell out of this dude. Beat him so bad, it took six cops to restrain him. Bumpy hated Red, and Red hated Bumpy. From that day forward, whenever the two spotted each other, it was a shootout on sight. These two had many shootouts against each other. Later on in life, they both admitted that both of them strongly admired the other one. Through all the battles, all the shootouts, all the gangster stuff that these dudes were a part of. It's crazy because neither one of these dudes were murdered. Red died in 1989 from bladder cancer while he was locked up. Bumpy died in 68, being surrounded by family and friends due to a heart attack. Queenie was known to have a very foul mouth. She'd cuss you out in many different languages. A mouth like a sailor, but she always dressed like a lady. Queenie loved to wear silk dresses, and her favorite colors were silver and gray. She often wore a hat that she cocked to the side also. The numbers game of Depression Era Harlem was the poor man's lottery. If a struggling family put down a dollar and picked the right three numbers, they can get up to $600. In the 1920s, most Harlemites only made about $10 to $20 a week. Queenie never folded against the Dutch. Even after all the attacks on her number spots, she still never gave in to his commands. She went off on the other Negro policy bankers for accepting Dutch's offers. I will stand up to the goddamn Dutch. What kind of man are you to desert a lady in the fight? You cannot let this white man take over the colored operations. One incident, all of the men abandoned Queen. She had to hide inside of a coal bin in the basement of one of her number spots, while Dutch men shot up her spot and stormed through it. When Bumpy got back on the streets, he said he'd provide protection for her. Once again, just like before, she yelled at Bumpy and said, I can protect my damn self. I need you to take care of the Dutchman. I need you to run his ass out of Harlem or kill him. Years later, after the war was over with Dutch, Bumpy opened up his own number spot. 
1936, she got married to Black Hitler, AKA Sufi Abdul Hamid. Sufi was caught cheating on her and she fired seven shots at him, hitting him twice. Queenie was arrested for attempted murder and was sentenced to 10 years. After her release, she bought a huge mansion out in Long Island, never to be seen again. She died in 1969. This was Harlem Stories Part 2. I hope you enjoyed it. I have a lot of information on this era. I can make about 20 videos on Bumpy. So, if you like these documentaries, let me know. I'll keep them going. Thanks for watching. Make sure you subscribe. Make sure you hit the thumbs up. Thanks for the love.